I guess your congruent triangles is the next thing we're going to look at and it's it's simple congruent congruent triangles means I'm I'm comparing two triangles with each other and I find that they have equal sides um, I don't mean to say that that one triangle have all four side, all three sides equal. I mean to say that if I have one triangle and I compare it to another triangle, then they will have corresponding sides that are equal. So maybe I should um, should put that in a corresponding corresponding equal sides. So in other words, these, this one is equal to that one, this one is equal to that one, and this one is equal to that one. And if I have congruent sides, okay, so when we do have all three sides to be the same, we also automatically have that the corresponding angles will also be the same. So that angle will be equal to that angle. This angle would be equal to that angle. And this angle would be equal to that angle. Corresponding angles are the same. And again, I'm not going to do the proof for all of this. It's quite, quite intense. Okay. And to show that two things are congruent, I use three lines, almost like an equal sign, but it's got three lines. That's congruent. So if I want to say that triangle A, B, C is congruent to this triangle, what's very important is I have to keep the order in which they are congruent the same. So for example, angle A is congruent to angle E. So I'll have to start with angle E. Angle B is congruent to angle F, so I have to have F, and then lastly remaining is C, which is congruent to D. So you can't just write it in any order, it must be the same order in which they are congruent. Okay, to understand what congruent triangles is. Okay, now, to show that two triangles are congruent, okay, I want to show that the triangles are congruent. I either can show that they've got that this side is equal to that side, that all three sides are equal, and uh, and then I'll use a shorthand side side side. Then I've shown that each side is equal to each other side. Or if I don't maybe have that all three sides, if all three sides are the same, then everything else is the same. But also, if I can show that I've got two sides and an inclusive angle, then they're also congruent. Okay, I've run out of a bit of space, so I'm going to mess up my... But, for example, if I knew that this one, this angle, is equal to that angle, then I also need the two sides that make up that angle, this side and that side. In other words, that's what we call an inclusive angle. It's the angle made by those two sides. So if I can show, so maybe there's one side I don't have. Then I need one angle, but the angle that's in between. Okay. Let's say there's three sides that, sorry, two sides I don't have. Okay. Then I must have two angles. It can be any two angles, but I must have two angles. So for example, I'm going to mess up the sketch a lot, okay, I might have this angle and that angle. What that means is that I can show that these two angles are the same and that those two angles are the same. And if I can show that doesn't mean they're congruent, I need one more side. It can be any side, it can be this side or that side or that side. As long as I can show that this length and that length is the same, so one side and any two angles. 
A. It is not true that if I have angle, 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 that the two triangles are congruent. If I have th two triangles, and let me give you an example. Here's a triangle, and here's a bigger triangle. This is 90 and that is 90. They actually share that angle. And this angle and that angle has to be equal because the inside angles must be 180. So if two of the angles are the same, then the third angle must also be the same. Okay. So in other words, if, if I have two angles, then the third angle is automatically equal. So this... This third angle doesn't give me extra information. I still need one side. Okay, so three angles is not sufficient to show congruence. Okay, but what I can do is if I have, and that's the fourth one, there's only four. The fourth one is if I have a right, right angle triangle. I've got two right angle triangles. Okay, so Basically, what I have is an angle. Now, before, if I had an angle, I needed it had to be the, the interior angle. The angle, so now I'd need that side and that side. Okay, but with a right angle triangle, it's sufficient if I have the hypotenuse. Okay, so in a right angle triangle, I only need to show that the hypotenuse of the two are equal, and you can see that's not the inclusive. It has nothing to do with the inclusive sides and any other side. So to show that two triangles are congruent, meaning I want to show that they've got four sides the same. If I have that they have four sides the same, I'm sorry, four sides, three sides, then everything else is the same. Okay, but if I can't show that three sides are the same, I can show the two sides and the inclusive angle. Then I know, if I know that this is true, I know that all three sides are the same and all three angles are the same. Or if I don't have two sides, I need one side and two angles. If I have one side and two angles, I know that all three sides and all three angles are the same. If I don't have that, then I need, and I only have one angle, I need the hypotenuse on the side. Okay, the right right angle triangle I put these on the side and then again I know that all three sides and all three angles will then be equal now we're not going to look at the proofs for, for why these three are four things are true but we are going to use congruent triangles a lot in the next set of proofs okay I'll start the first one with proving another triangle theorem